So here's something interesting. Right now, you can't change your display name when you join a Microsoft Teams meeting. I think that might be about to change. Hello everyone, my name is Tom Morgan. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP around Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams development. And because of that, I've seen something which I think is really interesting around being able potentially to change your display name when you join a Microsoft Teams meeting. Why would you want to do this? Why would you want to change your display name? There's a few different reasons, I think. Firstly, if you're joining an external meeting, uh, then you kind of want to maybe put your company name in brackets so that it's obvious when you're joining uh, that you're where you're from and what your purpose there is. Or you might put your job title or area or whatever else it is. You might want to just add some extra information to your display name. Another reason, sometimes when you do get set up in those external tenants, uh, you might not get the best display name given. So I've got uh, tenants that I've joined and I've been added as a member of and they just use my email address. Uh, not great. Sometimes they put my surname and forename the wrong way around. Being able to change my display name as I join a Teams meeting would uh, enable me to sort all that stuff out and, and kind of fix it all up, which would be great. Uh, another reason, maybe just for funsies, you know, if it's a kind of Friday informal thing, Maybe we've got a thing where we all show up as our favorite TV character. So I could put that as my display name on the way in. Wouldn't that be fun? Lots and lots of good reasons. This is something you can do already in Zoom, but you can't do it in Teams. Uh, I think whether or not you can do it depends a little bit on the platform. I know you can do it in Zoom. I know you can't do it in Teams. I'm not sure about some of the others. I do think this is a thing people want. So if you go and have a look right now at the, uh, the Microsoft Teams feedback portal, so I'll show you. Here's the Microsoft Teams feedback portal. I just did a search for change display name. There's lots and lots of entries in here. Um, a lot of these are duplicates, but you can kind of see allow users to change their display name, changing display names, changing display name when attending a meeting. Uh, lots of different, like people asking the same thing again and again. It definitely feels like there is some kind of, you know, people want to do this, it seems. Uh, this seems to be a thing and it completely makes sense. And like I say, this is a feature you can do today in Zoom. Um, I mean, not that that should be a reason to do it in Teams, but it's always good to compare those two worlds. Um, you know, what works in, in Zoom may well work uh, in Teams. In fact, if I just jump to the Zoom uh, support article, you can see uh, there's a way to do it here. Joining a meeting, you can choose it. It's interesting that there's some kind of uh, option for a host to sort of selectively allow this or not allow this, uh, which is interesting when I talk about that in a minute as well. So lots of reasons to want to do this and just, uh, you know, you can't do it today, but I think that is changing. Why do I think that is changing? Okay, let's talk about the Microsoft Graph. Microsoft Graph, big REST API for developers. If you don't know what an API is, don't worry. It's a thing developers use to talk to other things. Um, if your thing exposes an API, developers can hook up to it and make calls to it and do stuff with it. And that's basically what the Microsoft Graph API is. It's a big API endpoint for developers to do stuff with Microsoft products and services. And as part of that, that includes Microsoft Teams and it includes being able to take actions on things in Microsoft Teams, like create a meeting, for instance. In order for that to work, the Graph API needs to publish information for developers about what's going on. And so some of those lists of things are the commands that developers can call to do stuff like create a meeting, delete a meeting, edit a meeting, join a meeting, lots of meeting things. Uh, but also, as well as all the commands, there's also the, like a model, if you like, of, of what a meeting really is. And that's really just a list of properties, things like its name, its start time, its end time. So there's a ginormous great list of properties. And you can go and look at them online. They're all documented. In fact, this is what they look like right now. This is the list uh, for an online meeting, which is what they call a Microsoft Teams meeting. And you can see all these different properties uh, for things like broadcast settings, chat info, creation time, the ID, lots and lots of different things. Okay, what's interesting and new? So if I go from the 1.0, which is the GA production supported API, there's a beta one, 
not supported, meant for developers building new things. It's where all the new stuff comes first, so we can try it out and test it out before it goes into production. Not supported. If I go and look at these properties, there is a new property in here, and it is right here. Allow participants to change their name. The description is that it specifies if participants are allowed to rename themselves in an instance of the meeting. What does this tell me? It tells me that into the beta endpoint, so presumably at some point it's going to go into the GA 1.0, there's a property against a Microsoft Teams meeting to allow people to be able to change their name. So this tells me two things. First, I think it's reasonable to assume that because this is here, people are going to be able to change their name. But secondly, that there is going to be some ability for a meeting organizer to turn that on or off. That's interesting. So there's lots of things we don't know yet. We don't know any timescales. We don't know if this is going to be on or off by default, and that could be massive. If it's on by default, then people most of the time are going to be able to change their display name, unless the meeting organizer really specifically says, actually, I don't want that to happen for this meeting, or you've got a top level administrator who can maybe turn it off across the whole tenant. If it's off by default, I think that would be kind of interesting because then nobody will be allowed to use it unless the meeting organizer specifically says, for this meeting, people are going to be allowed to change their name. I feel like the most open answer is to have it on by default so people can express themselves um, and that feels kind of right. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. There are lots of good reasons why this might not have happened yet. Things like security worries, uh, user impersonation worries, all those are kind of, I, th I think they're real. Maybe they're just perceived. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to see how this is implemented. Will Microsoft implement it in a way that makes it obvious that a name's been changed, for instance? I think that would be smart. Um, so lots of things to think about as this comes, but it's exciting because I think this is fulfilling a need that people have. Um, I think it's interesting to see where it goes. Like I say, no timelines or anything on any of this. It's just interesting that it's shown up now in the API properties. So it's a thing we can start to watch for um, and we can kind of see, see what happens. It'll be interesting to watch. And this is why being, develop being a developer is fun because you can get into the code and you can get to see the things as they're evolving. It kind of, this does happen sometimes where the, you know, the, the APIs get updated before the, the actual feature arrives. That just kind of makes sense. It's the, it's the way to do it. You have to put the foundations in before you put the building on top of it. Um, and so it gives us a little early look into what might be coming, but it does leave us with a lot of questions. So this is going to be one to wait on um, and just see how it gets implemented um, before we kind of take it any further. Hope that's been interesting. Hope it's been useful. Hope it allows you to do some planning. You can go and check out the beta the API for yourself um, to see what's coming down the line. And I will talk to you again next time.